go through some introductions. We have a space open for demo or package reviews, and we'll talk about some projects. And at the end, we'll have a question and answer. I'll start the introductions. Um, my name is Matt Droder from Ross Agriculture and I'm in Washington State and I'm passionate about robotics and farming. I want to go down the line. Marchin. Okay, yeah, Marchin here from Open Source Ecology, founder. Uh, interested in a robotic tractor that we are working on at Factory Farm, the micro track that we just finished. So that's where we are. <clears throat> Matt, the link for, to GitHub doesn't appear to work. If that's your link. Next, Lex, introduce yourself. Introductions, next. Jeremy. Can you hear me? This is Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, I'm a gas community and I'm currently working on IMU driver and some, uh, some GPIO stuff for the micro track. Is Josh the Josh from OSC or is this another Josh here? New Josh. Okay. So there's another Josh in our group. Okay. Misha, Misha. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, well, basically, I'm software engineer. Work for a local robotic company here in San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, yeah, just got curious about this meetup. Decided to join. Love it. Okay. And Sohin, Shah, can you speak? Speak up. Okay, Matt, you want to continue? <laughs> Is that you had fellow Jitster there? No. Is it? No. Who posted that? So here's the Ross Agriculture GitHub. You can follow the link in the chat. Inside of here, we have a couple repositories and we started uh, projects. And this is a Raspberry Pi self driving tractor based software. There are some open items so that people can work on different tasks if they have some time available. Um, so, and if your mic is muted, you can um, check that. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought that there was a hard hardware problem. My bad. Hello? Yep, yep, go ahead. Yep, they're coming in. Do you want to 
talk a little bit about your project. Sure. Is that the right time? Yep. Okay. Cool. So uh, previously, we had worked on the AdBot project. I can share the link. I, I think someone already had shared the link to the uh, to the competition details. So uh, the task, uh, the, the competition we uh, participated was to traverse the field in rows, take the weed, and then to spray herbicide on the weed. So the last time we had an all electric vehicle that was custom built at our university here in Indianapolis. Uh, I'm studying at IUPUI. Most of you guys would know about it, I suppose, but uh, it's, it's a part of the Purdue University schools. And uh, so the last time what we had, uh, the issues we faced were the electric motors were not powerful enough to traverse through the fields. That was the first thing. Uh, we did use Navio with the Ardu Pilot software, and we were able to make it navigate on a nice, nicer road, but it didn't perform as we wanted it to on the field itself. So that was something that we were trying to get over with this time. Uh, the other problem was that we did use ROS, which was a major setback because uh, we had three independent systems and there were three different interfaces that were, you know, three inter different interfaces for, to just control each system, which was very, very tedious and it, it just wasn't the right way. Just wasn't the way it was supposed to be. So this time we're planning to use ROS. We're planning to have a Yamaha Wolverine, uh, which is like a big truck kind of thing. Uh, it's like uh, an ATV, and it, it I think it runs on diesel, so that would solve our problem with the uh, powertrain. Have uh, this is like a picture of it. I just quickly I made a did a quick search. Um, but one question uh, I would like to address to the community would be: Would it be, uh, you know, would it be, would, would it be more uh, feasible uh, to use the same Navio and uh, the uh, the Navio? Uh, Navio plus Raspberry Pi uh, in hardware on the on this robot, which would be much bigger in size as compared to the older one, because the older one was actually like 30 by 10, uh, 30 by 10 inches, 30 by 20 inches, which was like pretty compact. But this one is actually a big car, a uh, real size car, so real life full-size car, so uh, would it be feasible to use the same Navio hardware? Although it has two IMUs on board, uh, I am still not so sure about using uh, the IMUs on board. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Uh, the other, other, uh, other concern would be that we will have a full-size computer, full-scale computer on board for the detection part because the last time we had a laptop on board and we didn't have like, it was just a fixed up system. This time we're planning to have a much nicer and streamlined power supply just for the laptop, I mean, just for the computer on board. Would it be, uh, would it be more feasible to have just the computer uh, or just the Navio? Because the Navio would have to interface with the actual raw system on the computer itself so I was concerned about that and I would definitely love to take input from you all. This is Kyler I have thoughts uh, can you hear me? Hi yes. Um, I traveled a similar path so I started okay. out with the Navio okay. um, and then went to a Python script, and then went to ROS. Um, so 
I can tell you that I am, well, I didn't go very far with the Navio and APM. Uh, huh. I thought that Mavlink and Navio were uh, way too difficult to do what I needed to do. Um, I'm using much larger machines. Mm -hmm. uh, so simple servo motor controls, the SCs, that's, uh, that was insufficient for my needs. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't know what kind of control you'll have with this Yamaha. Okay. I, I can imagine you're going to want to use a linear actuator, for example, in a yes. servo mode. Mm -hmm. um, you would do that for Navio. It seems like it should be quite feasible, but uh, okay. I don't know how. Uh, so the last time we had a similar, uh, we used a, uh, a linear actuator uh, along with a potentiometer. We had uh, <laughs> a physical uh, assembly for the potentiometer to just sit there. And uh, so when the when the vehicle actually makes a turn, it resists, it, it turns the potentiometer in the same in, this, in the same angle. And then we had a table, lookup table connected to an Arduino, and the Arduino itself was connected to the Raspberry on the, with the Navio. So that's how we interfaced it, and that's what we used uh, for, like, to get the feedback from the linear actuator itself. Uh, yep. to, um, do you know that you can get linear actuators with feedback built in? Yes, we do, but we didn't have, I mean, uh, working with universities is uh, some, somewhat uh, difficult because uh, you have to, once you have the parts come in, you can't change your yep. specifications. And uh, I, I understand. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. and, and I can also, uh, there are some other uh, sensors that I would recommend. There's a GM sensor that I use that you can pick up at a hardware uh, auto parts store. Um, but I, so, so you've already gone through this where you want to use the Navio, but in order to do so, you have to run through an Arduino mm -hmm. to make everything work. Yes. Um, so with my, with my bots, I use typically a, uh, a Pi that drives, if I need to, uh, drives a, an Arduino, mm -hmm. um, I happen to need 500 hertz PWM for one of my bigger tractors. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Arduino is a natural. Um, I also use something called the Lab Jack. Okay. Um, it's just a really simple interface that it, it's general purpose. I/O has analog. Um, just very simple to use, uh, but it's it's a USB interface. Although they're Later ones have have Ethernet and all sorts of things, um, but the the Arduino is a great choice for me, um, and I end up using Ross Serial on it. Are you familiar with that? No, I am not. I'm, uh, oh, I might okay. have to look into it. Um, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, sure. Ross Serial makes the Arduino super easy to use, um, and it's. Uh, some people are tempted to use the, the Arduino and do something simple like send send a byte, um, and that byte controls the output of one pin or eight pins or whatever, um, and then read a byte back. Um, that's great, but it's really limited in what can be done. Um, you, you won't have a way to, to expand it easily. You won't get you won't have uh, ways to track error conditions, that sort of thing. Um, Ross Serial just fits in with all the Ross tools, and I like it. I like it a lot. Um, can you send a link? Latest, can you, uh, I just can you provide instrumented a, link? A, a combine recently, and I went back to the Lab Jack. So just a uh, Raspberry Pi with a Lab Jack sitting off of it, and that controls everything. Um, and boy, if, if you don't need anything complicated, uh, a lab jack sure makes it. Okay. Um, how do you navigate, uh, like uh, GPS navigation? How do you use GPS navigation? Though? Yep. Yep. Good question. Um, so, yeah, if you're the the other thing about the Navio is that it does have the IMUs on board. You figured that out. Um, makes navigation 
kind of easy. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in precise navigation, at least, is easy. Yes. Um, I'm using dual RTK receivers. Uh, in fact, my latest is a, a high-end, high-end, well, a low-end INS with 8 millimeter uh, precision and two antennas, so it, it does 1,000 hertz uh, IMU output. Um, okay. So if you're going to something like an RTK system, and I use RTK for my heading. I've always used RTK for my heading. Mm-hmm. Um, then the IMU becomes a lot less important. Um, also, if your speeds are low, the IMU becomes a lot less important. Um, I, for, for my tractor this summer, I was going up to five and a half miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, I did end up using an, uh, using an IMU, and I really like uh, the one from Tinker Forge. Okay. Uh, if you look up the IMU brick version 2, uh, the bricks are really cool, but you can use the IMU brick 2 all on its own. It's a USB interface. It self-calibrates. Um, it's not nearly as good as what I was hoping, um, but I had stable heading from my GPS receivers, and so I just needed the IMU to, to um, provide uh, or pose in between those readings, and it worked really well. So I can I can recommend that. I am not uh, a math guy. The, the math of IMUs and such, um, I really don't want to deal with. Okay. So the the Tinker the, the IMU brick too is is great for just giving a simple IMU output. Sorry, um, sorry. Can I ask you? Different, can I, yeah, can I interrupt ahead. you real quick? What's your name again? Uh, this is Kyler Laird. Kyler. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So are you? Hey, Matt. Are you? Do you have track of all the people that are on the call? By the way. How do you follow up with people and all that in case we lose them and they never show up again? <laughs> well, if they introduce themselves, then we we have that or their name. Okay. Tyler Laird is an expert in automation. He won the seeding challenge, the AgBot challenge last year. Mm-hmm. He also autonomously planted all of his corn, which is amazing. Good Whoa. Job. Okay. Oh, thanks. Okay. Okay, please um, continue. Yep. I, um, quickly, I since I went down this same path, uh, and I'm hoping someone can do it a lot better, um, mm-hmm. I'll point out that uh, one of my, well, my biggest fear in not using the Navio Plus was that I wouldn't have that navigation software. Um, yes. And I, I was most concerned because for my needs, as, as I mentioned, uh, or as Matt just mentioned, <clears throat> I was planting corn, so I needed to be very precise about traveling a straight line. That was all I cared about. Um, APM didn't seem didn't seem well suited for that uh, because it uses just waypoints. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're off by five inches, sure you're going to intercept that waypoint at the end of the field, <laughs> or that's the idea. Um, I, I need to be always on the line. Um, so I ended up making the break and saying, I'm just going to program this myself. I programmed something really dumb, um, but it worked. So as far as navigating through the field, I suggest that you uh, don't be afraid to write your own software. And and there's probably some really good ROS code out there. I just mm-hmm. didn't. I didn't find it. I wasn't able to put it all together. I got hung up on things like uh, everything wanting odometry, and I was just using GPS. Um, Kyler, what's what was your system? Game. Sorry, what was your system cost on the GPS unit that got you to that to those straight lines? Hey, this is Kyler. Uh, Jitsi just yeah. rebooted, restarted on me. Um, can you say that he, someone was... Yeah, yeah. 
question. What, what was the cost? So you got uh, straight lines on a field using GPS only. I understand. And what was your system cost for that, for the actual sensor that got you to that kind of accuracy? Um, well, and it was GPS, and I did have the uh, the Tinkerford, uh, the IMU brick. Okay. Um, so the cost of a, this was an NVS, NV08, RTKA, dual GPS, um, that was maybe maybe twelve hundred dollars. Um, the IMU brick is something like seventy dollars, maybe. Uh -huh. um, plus shipping from Europe. Um, yeah, and hmm. that was it. So something under two thousand. Yeah. But, well, and antennas and all that. Um, on the other hand, I bought this new INS from Advanced Navigation, and it was twelve thousand. Okay. So. So is your project that you just described, the one for under 2000, is that open source and documented? Uh, kind of poorly. Um, I do have some code out there on GitHub, but it's not my final code. I, yeah, that just hasn't been a priority. Okay. Um, my, co my code is really bad, so I haven't been pushing it on people. Um, I'm, I'm happy to share it, but... Yeah, it's just not in good shape. Mm -hmm. I was okay. trying to get the work planted. <laughs> and now I'm trying to get it to harvest. So yeah. There's always something. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, there, there was great help got in there. Uh, and uh, I didn't get a chance to meet you at the competition, but it's really great to you know meet you finally. Uh, I'm sorry. I was I was a little busy trying to it, it found out network here. problems I, while I, I was there. Exactly, I know. It was the same with us, and I didn't even get a chance to <laughs> attend our own presentation. So. <laughs> oh, ouch. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, that, that was great input from you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I will definitely talk to the team that we have. They definitely are lean towards the Navio because it's like a $200 thing and it's uh, an easy fix for the professors because they don't have, they're trying to be as low on the budget as they can. So, um, oh, I am. Before I forget, um, I've been working with a Chinese company, Tersus, T-E-R-S-U-S. Uh -huh. um, and I, in fact, I was hoping to use their RTK receiver. They have a dual RTK receiver. Um, I had wanted to use it for the competition. They kept pushing it back, pushing it back. I finally got one. Oh. Um, so I got the box. I haven't even pulled it out yet. Um, I do not recommend the NBS. I got two of them, and one of them is a brick because a firmware update failed and the support was not good. Um, so the NBS worked for me, but I do not recommend it. Um, the Tursus dual RTK looks like a much better solution. It's L1, L2, and it, it just feels like a much more robust uh, solution. And so far, my interactions with the company have been outstanding. They sent someone to visit me. That's, that's great. Sure. Uh, I have noted it. I need to, I have a big list of things I need to look this week. So, yeah. Uh, also, uh, I would just like to add one more question open uh, for any input. Uh, so we, we're planning to have uh, a detection uh, uh, algorithm running. Like it should, it should be based on uh, some sort of neural network or some sort of machine learning algorithm, which I have not worked on, but I know that's going to be there. And we're, we're planning to use a separate PC for it. And would it be wise to just use ROS on that PC and then interface each of the other components and have everything on one system? Or would it be, would you guys recommend a separate bar for the detection? Because our main goal is the detection, uh, to get the detection algorithm running. I mean, the detection part. We are hoping to get at least 80 to 90% accuracy. And I mean, that's, some, that's, that's quite important for the robot itself. And I, I was just not sure if it should be running on ROS and uh, 
now because I've heard there are problems interfacing two ROS computers or maybe more, two or more ROS computers on the network. So. I'll let someone else go, but I do have thoughts about it. seems to be talking about using a raspberry is that kind of the gist of this um, yes. so let me know if I'm too far off base um, I for especially for a competition bot I would want to use fewer processors rather than more um, yes. and I would feel personally would feel much more comfortable using um, Something like an Arduino. I use an Arduino Mega 256 um, for my my uh, the one that I used in competition. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of I/O, plenty of memory. Uh, I usually use a Arduino Nano. Um, use something like that for the time critical stuff, like servo actuation of a linear actuator, for example, or your steering. If you're doing hydraulic yeah. control of steering, in my case. Um, offload that onto an Arduino somewhere, run it over raw serial, put all your processing, your other processing on another machine. Um, I, I would personally stay away from having several machines only because each one is more to maintain, um, more things to break, it's harder to snapshot the entire system. I already... I've already had problems because my Arduino code somehow I updated something and it wasn't it didn't match my raw serial on the Raspberry Pi side. I've experienced that. So um, feels better to me because it's easier for me to maintain and just make supplies and such. Um, it's just simpler with with a, a single big system. On the other hand. Uh, in your development environment with several people working on different things, perhaps, it might be much better to have uh, separate machines um, and, and then just define the interface through ROS. I don't, I don't know of any problem with interfacing with ROS. I use ROS, uh, like my current system, my Ross Master is a tractor that's in the shed right now um, using Verizon. And the other node is a combine sitting in another shed. And I've got another node that's a, a joystick and, a, and another Raspberry Pi that I slip in my pocket. Um, again, going over my, my phone. Um, so I would think that I'm, I'm about as brutal on the network as anyone, and I, I'm not seeing problems with it. And that's all over a VPN also. Uh, I use Tink. So I, I don't doubt that there are people encounter with networking, but, but Ross is really flexible and has been very robust for me. Thanks. That, that was simple. Uh, I'll definitely look, uh, share this, these thoughts with my team and Maybe, hopefully, we'll get down to ordering as less as possible. Because and if, if you're looking at the controllers, I have not used it. Um, but I, I suggest that you at least become aware of the NVIDIA, what is it, the, like the TX1, TX2, something. Um, NVIDIA is really trying hard to get in this space. Mm -hmm. And their controllers are very powerful, great for doing... Um, uh, visual processing, uh, mm -hmm. low power, they're small, so I would think that something like that would be a good fit for what you're doing. Okay, thanks. Uh, sure. So the, the thing is, uh, we are not looking to purchase a computer for this purpose, quite honestly. They're just going to give us something from the surplus. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So, <laughs> it's, it's well, on the other hand, take a look at uh, DIN rail mount Raspberry Pis because they're cheap and 
easy to throw on there. Yeah. Sure. sure. Thank you so much. Uh, that that's something. I, sure. Uh, I think that's all from my side about this project. If anyone else would like to share about their projects, I would be really interested. Jeremy, you want to cover the work that's being done on the micro track? Yeah, sure. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yep. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, last weekend I uh, made it out to uh, Urchin's uh, place and we got to see the tractor. Brought a few things. Um, uh, on Sunday, I spent some time getting a rough draft. I saw Paul Boucher was on earlier. Would have been he gets back on here. Let me know. But uh, anyway, I've been updating his original IMU code to work with our new uh, uh, Spark Fund signed off Razor IMU. Um, so that that's going pretty well. As a matter of fact, I feel like it's ready to kind of get some second eyes on the code and. Somebody have a look at that. There's a publish the repos, right? Yeah. Yes, they are posted. Okay, so I have a fork of Razor IMU 9 off, and uh, I have three commits. Uh, it would be nice to see what people think. Uh, it's on a kinetic devel branch, so have a look. Uh, the other thing that we went to uh, look at was the interface between the between the Raspberry Pi and the um, machine to drive the tracks. So that was a little bit more complicated because the Raspberry Pi has three uh, 3.3 volt logic levels, and the um, and the um, relay module we had had five volt logic. So we tried a 3 to 3, 3.3 to 5 volt um, converter, which wasn't working. We had it all pinned out, and uh, for some reason we couldn't get the 5 volt signal through. Um, but I ordered a Raspberry Pi board. It's supposed to be here tomorrow with four relays on it. And so I hope to at least do some prototyping with that. In the meantime, I found uh, kind of a generic. I think I put it on the on the project file. I added that on maybe Monday or Sunday. It's a <clears throat> it's a generic uh, ROS package for GPIO off the Raspberry Pi. It's pretty simple. You configure it in a YAML file, and it, um, it sets up the control through services uh, ROS services. So we would still have probably need another node, but it would be a simpler node than what I was conceiving of. And uh, so, so that would be what's left, at least for machine control. Um, the last piece is the simulation. We had a lot of great help from Ian to get, get uh, stuff set up and models created. Um, but right now, we still need the simulation portion to be completed. Um, with the IMU and GPS and uh, being interface. So uh, if anybody's uh, open to any of those kind of tasks, that would be, that would be what, the, what they're looking for right now. I think Matt has it all, um, has it all worked out on the Ross Agricultural uh, GitHub page. There's a project tab which has all the things that we're working on and so if, if you find time that you uh, have some expertise then there's a lot of, a lot of things there to look into. Any questions? No, it's absolutely clear. I, I have questions. Go ahead. Um, I'm curious about your hardware interface, it sounds like you've gone through a lot with that. Um, I just want to make sure that you know what's out there. Um, I, I used the Arduino 
a lot because it has 5 volt. The Arduino Nano, the Mega 256, have 5 volt logic, and that helps me in some situations. Um, but there are certainly lots of. Uh, did you say you were using relays for control? Yeah, relays uh, to control. Uh, uh, yeah, for there's there's basically two tracks on this. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the model, but the two tracks and there there's a relay for forward left track and there's a relay for forward right track and a reverse left track and a reverse right track. Okay. Um, so, first of all, um, I would strongly, strongly recommend using solid state relays. Um, and I've got a board, uh, I used it in my first bot that is from Sane Smart, S A I N Smart. Uh, you can get the, you can get an eight SSR board, uh, and it'll take three volt, five volt, whatever logic. Uh, and do DC control. They have an AC control also, but make sure you get the DC control if that's what you want. Um, and then I, I only say this because I've been uh, I've encountered some people who don't know about this. Um, if you are controlling motors, uh, don't use relays. Um, there are H bridges that are vastly better suited. Um, if you get an H-bridge, you can go on eBay and you can find uh, motor controller H-bridges. Um, no, but, but this is just different. this is just solenoids. That's, this is just solenoid sure. activation of hydraulics. Is oh, it, it's hydraulic. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. awesome. Um, then <laughs> then I'll, I'll push you off somewhere else. Um, I use the what's called a MOSFET 4. Uh -huh. um, I think they're IRF 521s or something, MOSFETs. Um, I drive big hydraulic solenoids with them, uh, and they're cheap. The, the, the board is maybe like $3. I, I get them in dozens from China. Um, can you send a link? And you can send a link to this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll have to figure that out. I'm new to this interface. Um, what was the name again, Tyler? The Mos MOSFET 4, M-O-S-F-E-T 4, and I think it has an IRF 520, 521 something, uh, it has four of those MOSFETs on it. If you look for MOSFET 4 and Arduino, you'll probably find it. It's a, it's a, just a PCB, um, yeah, you can hook it up to four solenoids real easily and uh, just give it logic to control that cheap, easy interface. Yeah. And, and if, um, I'm guessing that these are bang-bang valves, they're not proportional, but yes. if you ever wanted to control a proportional valve, you can do it. Yeah, this is just not proportional. Mm-hmm. Um, even then, so my first two tractors, I used bang bang valves. I used the um, the MOSFET four, and I wasn't getting the slow speed that I wanted for small corrections. And I ended up doing some tweaking, where I would, um, as I turned off one solenoid, instead of letting the spring, letting it do a spring return. I would fire the other solenoid for just a, a moment, and I could I could cut down my uh, my my movement speed quite a bit. It made it reasonable. So uh -huh. even with a bang bang valve, you might want a little more control than you'll get with a mechanical relay. Um, and while I've got you, do you know about solid state relays and uh, their SSR modules? Is that something you're familiar with? Well, the, like the same smart, like four or eight channel relay, those are, I thought those were, are those solid state or are those mechanical? Yep, they have both. Um, I use the solid state ones. I finally, um, I recently got a uh, module with a mechanical relay. I, did, I didn't uh, end up using that one. 
Um, but uh, you can also get solid state relays. These are industrial pieces. They're, they look like little, I call them pucks. Um, they're, they're epoxy uh. bricks that just have two wires on one end or one side and, or at the top, two wires on the bottom. You give it three volts on the bottom, it starts conducting on the top. Uh, the back of it is a heat sink. And these things are anywhere from, say, maybe $10 to $60. Um, and they can control really high loads. Um, and I even do pulse width modulation with them to control like a fertilizer pump. Um, but if you want something that's really robust and has uh, screw terminals, that's the way that I would go. I, I buy, again, dozens of those. And if I, if I blow one, I can just unscrew it and screw a new one in. Are you talking about this, the robust ones being the solid state relays or the other one? So, um, yeah, these are all solid state relays that I'm talking about. Okay. Um, but these are kind of, um, these are more of an industrial design. I don't know if there's a name for it. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's a very, there's, there's a form factor. Uh, they're all over eBay. Okay. Um, Okay. And they're, I think it's basically a, a, a FET and a, an optocoupler, probably, and, okay. and a bunch of potting uh, or epoxy or something. Okay. That so, it all together. if you wouldn't mind, on the left hand side of the Jitsi, there's the chat box there. If you open it up, can you type your, uh, your email? So, I'm on an Android phone. Oh, okay. I'm not, oh, maybe seeing not. That. Okay. What's your email? Can, can we get uh, your email to follow up on this? Yeah, um, Matt, can you share that agrobotic or the Ross Robotics email or Ross Agriculture email that I sent? Yeah, I can send that address. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, now I see it. This solid state relays. Yeah, okay, that's a good hint. I I just <laughs> knew about the blue, blue mechanical ones. Okay. Yeah, I I really hate mechanical relays. Okay. Um, I'm using one in my combine right now, uh, and I drive it with a MOSFET 4. Uh, well, no, I'm driving it with a Labjack right now. Uh, but I'm only doing that because I wanted a double pull, double throw, so mm -hmm. that I can uh, pass through the combine's yeah. typical system without where, running. Where are you located? Mine. Uh, I'm in Missouri here. Where are you located? Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Indiana. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all I've got, I think. I think that's good information. I um, hope at some point we can uh, exchange emails and get some like uh, specific parts you can recommend. I, I was looking up the MOSFET 4 while you are talking. I'm not sure I found the exactly right one, but... Uh, that and the uh, and the same smart uh, control that would be uh, good to kind of get some exact parts that you can recommend. Yeah, and um, the same smart. I think for what you're doing, it would be a great board for you. It'll give you the um, you'll get screw terminals out of it, which is nice, um, and you'll have eight channels. And so, if you want to control something else, you'll have plenty of them. Um, I started off just needing a couple, and I think I ended up using all of them in my first project. Kyler, did you learn this on your own here, or is, what, or is your background computers? Uh, I was computer science as an undergrad at Purdue, uh -huh. um, but yeah, I've always liked hardware, so okay. that's what I like to tinker with. Yep. I took some notes here, so if you look at, I, I, 
I, I tracked down your YouTube channel there. So um, yeah, if you look at the link there, Matt, it's one of the links. started out with the Pixie, the original Pixie, um, which was a pretty cool project, but didn't feel like it was very well refined. Um, the NVS that I used has been pretty good. Um, I think the Tercis is going to be a lot better. If you just want a single, simple uh, device, I've got a Reach RS. And I love it. Um, I, I strap it to an ATV and use it to survey fields. Uh, it's L1 only, but it's a nice packaged solution. So it's really cool. Um, if you've got the money, I think I'll recommend the advanced navigation line soon, but I haven't, I haven't gotten to play with mine yet. I do have a Pixie Multi, a uh, couple of them, and I haven't used them yet, but I think I think they're going to be a good solution, too. I, um, I'm, I'm just walking out by one of my tractors right now. Um, I'll tell you that when I first got my uh, NVS receiver, I used patch antennas that came with it, yeah. and I, I happened to be putting them on a steel roof of a tractor, and that worked okay. Um, I moved to another tractor, and I had to put the antennas on a frame on top of a plastic roof, and the antennas that were suggested to me by the company that sold the package uh, they, they didn't work at all. It turned out that they were timing antennas. I thought I was getting really good antennas from Talisman, and they were timing antennas. And I was trying to do a precise position, and especially to get the heading out of it, and they were not working well at all. Um, so I got, uh, I've been getting the uh, mini surveying antennas from Pixie. Uh, a pixie project and I've got a bunch of them now and they're they're just wonderful it's uh, like the mini surveying 500 I think it's the the brand I forget but uh, the pixie project they, they sell them and they're awesome
you have time for a jump in? You bet. Uh, I decided I'd, I'd do a little show and tell since a couple things have come up that I can show. Um, I don't think I can see what I'm showing, unfortunately. Let's see. How do I... How do I see... Are you seeing a video from me? No. Uh, no, we don't, we don't see our video. Before we could see your face, you were kind of in the dark. Yep. Um, boy, I'm trying. Let's see. Oh, how about now? No. We, we can see yet. I can't see. Yeah. Was that a yet? Oh, you can see. Yeah. Well, I'm in the. I, I don't know what all you can see, but can you see the, the lit system? Now it's frozen on your screen. <laughs> I can see it. Okay. Well, I was really hoping to show it because um, I've got a MOSFET 4, an H bridge. Raspberry Pi and the Sane Smart uh, solid state relays in here. Um, I'll try to get a picture of that. If you go to my YouTube channel, there I think there's one video where I do a tour of Trackobot Bot Three, and uh, all those are in there so that you okay. can see them. inside and I've made some changes to try to so I can participate better. I also put the uh, my old NVS dual RTK in here. I'm gonna play with that a little bit later. And I'm using the Verizon stick from Tractobot uh, 2 um, instead of the I did mount the Ubiquiti Rocket M5, uh, but the power over Ethernet, it won't use my power over Ethernet switch, it wants a passive switch, not an active switch. Uh, I did also mount a new camera, but I obviously haven't hooked that up since I didn't have the Ubiquiti working. So, let's see what it does.
flight right now is over Verizon. Um, the last feature that I added, let's see if this works, the hitch. So I can control the hitch up and down, and I'll set the position that the hitch goes to. I'll set that on the tractor locally. I don't, I don't need to change yet. So, the uh, last feature is the kill switch. serious about safety um, and so I have kill switches on both tracks um, they're actually I used uh, uh, kill what are they if, if you have a PF um, what is it a personal whatever a jet ski um, they have uh, lanyards basically that you clip on to your wrist or something um, and you pull it and it shuts it off I put some of those, I put a couple of those, uh, one on each track. So if you get up alongside it, you can pull it and it'll kill the machine. Um, I also used a long range wireless kill switch, um, one that I bought originally. You can buy them from Carry Mart, C A R Y M A R T. Um, I didn't especially like the design of it, and so. For Tractobot Bot 3, I built my own long-range kill switch using a, uh, a LoRa Feather. L-O-R-A is long-range radio, um, and the Feather is something by Adafruit. It's a simple board, and you can even get them. Uh, I've got a Pi. I think it's called a Low Pi. I haven't used it yet. It's in. It's a Micro Python uh, with LoRa processor. Anyway, I used uh, a feather, a uh, low raw feather for the transmitter, and uh, and then I've got another one sitting in the tractor, and it's just connected to one of these large industrial solid state relays, and if you hit the button on the remote, it it just kills the, the remote feather, and it has to be re restarted manually. Um, for the uh, for the transmitter, I used a. Uh, you can get these nice little waterproof uh, cases for GPSs, and they have a magnetic back. And it was real handy to put a, a big big red button on it, and I could stuff a battery and the feather in there, and it works works really well. So that's the extent of my safety mechanism. I do not have any anti-collision uh, devices right now. I do, I have ordered, I've got a couple thermal cameras that I am planning on using. Um, I'm also really interested in LEDAR, L-E-D-D-A-R, I think. Uh, it's using LEDs instead of a, a scanning laser for doing uh, point clouds, basically. I have not gotten anything on that yet, though. So I have to, uh, I have to keep pretty, uh, pretty close track of what my machines are doing because they could do some damage quickly. Josh says, thank you, that's excellent. 
Skyler, we really appreciate all you've done in helping the community. You're quite welcome. And I'm that, wraps getting up, on that wraps up our time for tonight. Um, we'll be back uh, next Tuesday, so if you have the time, stop by. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the invitation. Good night.